Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Built By. Uh, this week we have Rich Harshaw, who's the CEO at Level 10 Contractor, a marketing agency that helps modeling businesses with everything under the sun when it comes to marketing, SEO, um, social ads, Google ads. Um, Rich, thanks so much for being on, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So before there's a lot of good stuff in here. Before we dive in, I would love to you know talk a little bit about um, you know your introduction in the industry. It looks like you've been here since 1994 is when you got your start, um, and when you realized this was really a, a, your niche working with home improvement companies. Yeah, I got involved. Uh, I, I had some remodeling clients back in the early days. My first uh, remodeling client was a 50 million dollar roofing company back in like 90 six or seven or something. Uh, but I really got involved in 2005 when I did a webinar with the folks over at Market Sharp. Mm. And uh, that went well. And I don't know if you know Tim over there. He's uh, a great connector yeah. in this industry. He knows pretty much everyone. And uh, I said, hey, who's the marketing guru in this industry? Because every industry has their marketing gurus. And he said, well, there really isn't one. We got a lot of sales gurus, but no, no real marketing guys. That's why I asked you to come on this webinar. So I thought, well, maybe I'll be it. And started doing a bunch of seminars with Tim and Market Sharp in conjunction with those guys back in about uh, 2005, six, seven. Did something like 30 seminars that I started speaking. Uh, you know, any event that the industry has held, I've spoken at a lot of events that they don't even hold anymore. But uh, yeah, been going ever since. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Good old uh, good Tim Mush. Uh, you know, we're we're good partners with the Market Sharp as well, and actually, we've had a, a podcast with them previously. So, um, yeah, it's awesome to hear. Um, one thing that I really want to dig into today is uh, this concept that you talked about in one of your recent podcast episodes. By the way, Level Ten has an amazing podcast, uh, daily podcast, which is. Um, much more stressful than the, the weekly one we have here, but um, it's great. And you had an episode recently, episode number 344 uh, on uh, August 17th, where you talked about identity. And I really think this is a good starting place for a lot of companies that haven't put much thought into their marketing uh, because it starts, it's the foundation for everything really. Um, so tell me a little bit about, um, I, I guess the first point is confirmation bias and, and how that kind of plays into um, this identity. Yeah, well, uh, I'll actually back up just a second. Mm -hmm. Even for companies who, who have put a tremendous amount of thought and, and effort into their marketing, typically what I find is this concept of identity is lacking. So first of all, just kind of a definition of what identity is, it's, it's about differentiation and standing out. And the definition of identity is finding ways to communicate with power, precision, and passion, how you're different, why you're better, what people can expect when they do business with you. And it sounds super, super elementary and fundamental, but uh, you know, most of my larger clients, we work with a lot of smaller companies in the maybe two to $6 million range, but we also work with a lot that are in the, uh, let's say 12 to $50 million range. And most of those larger companies come to me and say, hey, we know how to do marketing. Obviously, we're a $50 million company, but this idea of taking our identity, who we are, how we're different, why we're better, what people can expect when they do business with us, we, we don't really have that. That's not really happening. So mm -hmm. I come and help them inject that into their marketing and it, it makes a huge difference. So uh, regarding uh, what did you say? Confirmation bias? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned that was one of the, uh, the, the, the cornerstones of identity, really. Yeah. So it, to understand marketing, you really have to be uh, a student of psychology and understand kind of the human brain and the way people think and process information. And confirmation bias, it's, you know, the most obvious uh, example of confirmation bias is politics, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got the election going on right now and you've got Biden, you've got Trump. So here's the question, which one of those two do you like? And it doesn't matter what the answer is. No matter what, like uh, last night was the uh, vice presidential debate. So I turned it on to CNN afterwards and all they could talk about was how Kamala Harris destroyed Pence. And then you turn over to Fox News and all they can talk about is how Pence just destroyed Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Confirmation bias is where you look for information to support what you already believe. And you minimize evidence that goes against what you already believe. 
So what we want to do in marketing is we want to sort of plant the evidence. We want to show people and explain to people what they should be looking for so that they they make a decision in their mind, hey, that's what's important. So the, the example I give, and if you want, I'll go through this example. I think it's very illustrative. It's a, kind of a goofy story from when my kids were younger. We're driving uh, cross country from Texas, where I lived at the time, to Idaho, where my in-laws lived. And mm-hmm. this was back, it's 2005, so it's before, you know, iPhone. You couldn't just get on your phone and like, all right, we're going to book a hotel. You couldn't do that. You had to actually stop at the hotel. So we stopped at this place in Ogden, Utah, that it's the exit that has like five hotels. You know what I'm talking about. They, they, mm-hmm. There's always like five and one exit. And we're looking at these hotels and, and the Holiday Inn Express looks like it's the newer, cleaner of the options. And my wife, she hates old, crusty hotels. So, you know, the wagon wheel, the Howard Johnson, this is not going to happen. So we go in there and sure enough, it's a good hotel. It's fairly new. And we're checking in and there's this sign on the counter, like plexiglass sign where they like slide a piece of paper in. You've seen those? And, mm-hmm. and the sign, it was, I think it was about eight and a half by 11 standard size. And it said, welcome to the Holiday Inn Express, home of the Stay Smart shower head. And there's a picture of this big old shower head. And I was like, all right, whatever. You know, they had an advertising campaign going on back then on TV. So I kind of had some, a little bit of familiarity with that. Yeah. We checked into the room. And when we got into the room, Next to the TV on the, the, the dresser was a, another sign, the second one. And it said, welcome to your room at your earliest convenience. Check out the Stay Smart bathroom home of the Stay Smart showerhead featuring the Stay Smart showerhead by Kohler. And there was a big old showerhead picture on that. So I'm a marketing guy. I, I was curious now. So I went into the bathroom and on the counter in the bathroom, the vanity, there was a third sign now. And it said, welcome to the Stay Smart bathroom featuring. And then it had four things. The first one was uh, oversized plush towels. And I looked at them and they appeared to be bigger than normal, whatever. Okay, great. Number two, boat out shower curtain rod. Oh, yeah. yeah. This was a big deal back in 2005. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty ubiquitous now, but then it was like, wow, look, I can get in there and people's other people's naked won't touch me. So it was good. <laughs> so I noticed that. Number three was uh, designer toiletries. You know, look at these little bottles of, shampoo and conditioner and mouthwash or whatever. So that looked pretty good. Uh, fancy. And then mm-hmm. the fourth thing, of course, the stay smart shower. And there's a picture of this, the shower. So I looked over at the shower and that shower curtain, that boat out shower curtain, the shower was, it was closed. So I couldn't see the shower, the shower head. So I pulled it back and, you know, you see in the movies, like the light comes out and the, the <laughs> angel are singing. Yeah. There it was, the Stay Smart Showerhead. And the reason I know it was the Stay Smart Showerhead, because it was the funniest thing in the world. There was actually a sign about a foot tall by about five inches wide that was hanging from the showerhead, like a door hanger. Mm-hmm. And it said, this is the Stay Smart Showerhead. And it had a picture of the showerhead hanging from the shower. <laughs> and it said, you know, I think there was three different gourmet sounding settings, rejuvenating, revitalizing, reinvigorating. I thought, wow, this is really interesting. But here's the here's what I'm telling you this goofy story because here's what happens, and it ties in with this idea of confirmation bias. Remember Trump, Biden, who do you like, who do you hate, whatever. When they start showing you these signs at the check-in, next to the TV in the room, on the vanity in the bathroom, and now literally hanging, what happens is people notice the shower head and they see that it's big and they get an idea in their brain that, wow, this is really awesome. This is really cool. And they did surveys, the, the, the Holiday Inn Express people, where they'd ask people, you know, rate your stay. And it was from zero to five stars. And I mean, think about all the things that you can rate when it comes to a hotel stay. You know, the, the parking lot, the check-in process. Was it quick? Was the bed comfortable? Was the breakfast good? Was the pool? And all the different things. And they would embed in the middle of that somewhere, what would you think about the bathroom? And what did you think about the shower? And before they had run this campaign, people were rating the shower head at like 4.2 stars, which is, it's fine. What? Fine. Shower head. <laughs> Shower head. I mean, I, most people probably didn't really pay any attention or notice it, but after they ran this campaign and they put these signs, it rated at 4.9 stars. And here's the key. And this is the part that I don't want people to miss. It is the same shower head as before. The only difference is they're now pointing at it, pointing at the shower head. And they were doing it multiple times in multiple ways, different areas. And so what happens is people start to, to assign greater value 
to something that already existed just because it's being pointed at. And look, it delivered. It was a good shower head. If you did all of that and then you had this crusty little crappy shower head that sucked, then people would be like, you know, now you've pointed at something, pointed out something that is not good. But right. uh, in in contractor terms, here's what I found. You as a contractor need to find out what it is that you do that people like, that you're known for, that you've innovated, that makes you you. What's the DNA of your company? And then you need to point at those shower heads and you need to do it repeatedly in different formats in different ways. And that's what identity is all about. It's like, OK, we want to find what are the things that make you unique and different and better? And we want to explain those to people with power, precision and passion so that it's unmistakable. And then we want to hit them with it over and over again. And before you say, well, that sounds obvious. Here's what you'll find. Go to Google. Let's say that you're a, a window company or roofing, company, whatever. It doesn't matter. Go to Google. I'm going to do it right now. I've got Google on this <laughs> thing right here. And uh, I live in Utah, so I'm going to go and type in uh, roofing companies. Mm -hmm. All right. So we type in roofing companies and you say, okay, who comes up? And here's, um, let's see, elemental roofing. And here's what you're going to find. They're going to use, instead of this idea of, of identity, they're going to be using on their website and it would extend to their advertising what I call platitudes. Mm -hmm. The platitude is it's words and phrases that are used over and over so that they're they're trite and they they lose their meaning because they're so overused and they don't really mean anything. Best prices, best so you, like number one contractor in the state sort of thing. Correct. So um, I just found elemental roofing in Pleasant Grove, Utah. See how easily you could avoid roof, roofing issues. <laughs> Out of all the roofing companies in Aura, Pleasant Grove, Utah, and Utah Valley, Elemental Roofing is the company you can count on to maintain your roof. We provide roof repair, replacement, and new construction installation. While we mostly do residential roofing jobs, we also take on commercial roofing. How does that tell me how this company is any different, any better? Understand mm -hmm. what's happening. People are saying to themselves, I need a roofing company. They go to Google, they type it in, and then they find companies that say, guess what? We do that. Mm hmm but how are you different? How are you better? What makes you different? What can people expect when they do business with you? And they just simply don't say, it. imagine this. Imagine if you sent your salesperson into the house, how much money did you spend for that lead? Two, $300. Mm -hmm. And your salesman showed up and said, out of all the roofing companies in Orem, Pleasant Grove, Utah Valley, we're the one that you can count on to maintain your roof. <laughs> we, oh, there's more. We provide roof repair, replacement, and new construction. And we mostly do residential, but we also take on commercial roofing. Yeah. Did you to understand? This company and every company has had how many years to craft the most unbelievable message to set themselves apart and put it right. on this all important thing called their website? And it I, what, what kind of language can we use on this podcast? I, I'm not somebody that swears. Yes. It sucks. <laughs> Terrible. Right. Yeah. And it's super common. This is the 98%. I, we mm -hmm. do website audits where we uh, we offer companies, hey, send us your uh, website and we'll, we'll run it through this audit. We're running it through an audit looking for how easy it is for people to find it on Google and when people do find it, how well it does at um, – converting people that are looking into leads. And I, I did a I did an audit Monday this week on a 100 point scale, it scored negative three. Really? Wow. Less than zero. <laughs> because it was just, it, and it's not uncommon. Normally in those those uh, those audits, the typical range of scores is, is single digits to about the thirties. Yeah. And, and, Look, there's a lot of reasons. Part of it is technical SEO kind of stuff. But on the on the conversion side, is it converting people that are on the site into to leads? It almost all has to do with lack of of uh, identity. You, so you of are doing you contractor are doing a horrible job of differentiating yourself and explaining who you are, how you're different, why you're better, what people can expect. When you go into the house, your sales guy, he's great at that. Mm -hmm. But how many deals 
how many leads are you losing because they never even become a lead because they look at this this side elemental roofing and they go yeah i don't know let me keep looking they hit, here's what they do they hit the back button then they go oh well let's see oh cascade roofing let's see what mm -hmm. they say oh experienced and reliable provo roofing contractor when it comes to residential and commercial roofing in the provo area or anywhere in utah trust the roofer voted number one number one there it oh, is they actually have a seal that <laughs> looks like a blue ribbon they were <laughs> literally voted number one we are a contractor that has put a premium on providing consistent roofing quality and true customer service for over 25 years. Look, I'm not saying that those are not worthwhile things, but when you just yeah. leave it there, do you know that there was a court case one time? I used to live in Dallas, so this was news in Dallas because Pizza Hut is out of Dallas and Pizza Hut started getting killed by Papa John's. So they sued them because that's what that's the American way, right? Yeah. And they yeah, yeah. sued them over their slogan. You know what Papa John's slogan is? Do you remember? Uh, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Better ingredients, better pizza. And Pizza Hut sued Papa John's and said, that's not true. It's factually incorrect. You do not have better ingredients and therefore better pizza. And you know what the judge said? This went to the, the circuit court level one step below the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court refused to hear it on appeal. The Supreme Court. Wow. Here's what the here's what the the circuit level US court said. That is called advertising puffery. Now I use the <laughs> word platitudes. And they said nobody believes it anyway. So it doesn't matter if you use it. And they cited something like 175 companies that use platitudes in their advertising. Like uh, BMW is the ultimate driving machine. Well, is it literally the ultimate driving machine? And people become so used to this, this puffery, these platitudes, that it just kind of rolls off the understanding like water off a duck's back. But yeah. from your perspective as a, as a contractor, this is a huge, massive opportunity. Because if you actually talk about who you are, how you're different, why you're better, and not just that your products are better, but your core values, your workmanship, your bedside manner, how you treat people, and you put that and integrate that into your, your not just your website, but all of your marketing and advertising, it makes a massive difference. And I know this yeah. because yeah. this is what I spent my career doing, and we watch time after time after time when you actually take the time to do this and have the expertise to do this, it, it moves the needle. It pegs it at awesome. Yeah, Results. yeah. That's awesome. So you mentioned, um, I, I've heard you mention it a few times, but the the power, um, passion, and precision. Um, and this is how you like to work with companies when they're they're talking about their brand identity, basically. Um, what what does that mean in, in terms of uh, you know how I do present my brand? Well, so let me give you a good example of what is not power, precision, and passion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to laugh because here's, I'm just going to read the same website again. Mm -hmm. When it comes to residential commercial roofing, the trust the roofer voted number one in Utah County. Pro, Provo roofing, roofing contractor. Oh, ca sorry. Cascade Roofing has put a premium on providing consistent roofing quality and true customer service for over 25 years. This You remember, I don't know how old you are. I'm a little bit older than you. Do you have you ever seen the Peanuts cartoons like uh, yes. Charlie Brown? Like yes. when I was a kid, it was a big deal because they have the the Christmas and Halloween and Thanksgiving specials. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when Charlie Brown's the kids would talk to either the teacher or the parent? Wah, oh, yeah. wah, wah. That's what this sounds like. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. So what we want to do is come in and we want to speak with power, precision, and passion. So I'll give you an example here. I'm going to go to one of my clients. And this is a company called Solid State Construction. They're out of Boston. And uh, I'm just going to run down to their blog real quick just to give you an example. And here is a blog post that says, here's the title of the blog post. This bizarre nail, and nail is in quotation marks, is how we ensure Metro West's stoutest siding installation. And there's a picture of this, this nail that has this helix around it with spikes on it. It looks like something that Jason might use to kill you in Friday the 13th. <laughs> so you look at that and you're like, okay, that's kind of interesting. And when you read it, I want you to gauge this against power, precision, and passion. 
It says, we embrace new, weird, and wild industry innovations as long as it leads to a better result for you. The reason I'm the biggest James Hardy super fan in central Massachusetts is that we have the audacity to try to improve on perfection. Good enough isn't in our vocabulary. It's always, this is great, but what can we do to make it better? Then it talks about how we found this nail. It's called the Hardy nail, and it goes on to explain it. And it's using, let's listen to these three words, power, precision, precision. This is super, mm -hmm. super key. We want to use details. We, it's like building a case, right? right? Yeah. When you build a case, you, go, you don't go into the courtroom and say, well, you know, your honor, this guy couldn't have done it because he's a super nice guy. So there's no way he would have done it. Mm -hmm. The judge is going to say, and the, the jury's going to say, that's not enough detail. We, we need detail. I don't know if you remember back to the OJ Simpson trial. It was like he wore 11 and a half Bruno Molly shoes and here's the footprint and here's his glove and here's, uh, you know, the blood splatter. And if, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. There's like this ridiculous amount of detail. Well, that's how you present a case. And that's what we want to do is we want to present more of a case. Let me give you one more example from this same website. Here's another yeah. blog post. It says anatomy of a remodeling sales gangster. And sales gangster is in quotation marks. And when you go to this blog post, so here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to say that we're, we don't use high pressure sales. Right. So here's one way to say that. No high pressure sales. Okay. That's a platitude. Let's take it mm -hmm. to the next level. Here's an article. Telltale signs that you're dealing with a salesman who chooses high pressure solicitation over customer education. And then it says, we talk a lot about sales gangsters and why to avoid them if you need exterior remodeling in central Massachusetts. But what is a sales gangster? What does it look like? What exactly does he do that's so objectionable? We've created a diagram. Take a look at anatomy of a sales gangster. And then we have an illustration. And it shows this kind of cheesy looking. You can look this up. Go to Solid State Construction. Go into the blog. You'll see it. And it has this kind of cheesy looking dude. And it shows his eyes and his mouth and his arms. And you know, his watch loves to waste your time with three-hour appointments. And his eyes sizes you up like a lion preying on, on a gazelle. And then we compare that. You scroll down. Anatomy of a solid state project consultant and the guy that's look more professional. His ears listens to understand what you want to accomplish. Mouth discusses your needs. Watch is considerate of your time, never draws things out. So it's highly specific power, precision, and then, you know, driving that is passion. Right. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. You can, you can actually get the personality of the company through, you know, their copy that they're writing and stuff. So um, that's actually fascinating. I'm going to definitely okay. link that. Well, guess what you can do also now? So let's say you're on the radio or TV mm -hmm. and you wanted to go on there and say, hey, we don't do high pressure sales. And you think, well, why? hey, Rich, why are you so fixated on high pressure sales? Well, I'm not. This is one of literally 12 or 15 different points that we're going to build this case on. But it just happens to be the one that I pulled up. So we can actually come onto the radio now and say, hey, when it comes to high, when it comes to home improvement, roofing, siding, things like that, one thing you got to watch out for is high pressure sales. In fact, there's something that we call sales gangsters. What's a sales gangster? Well, and then you go on and you explain it. Now yeah. it's more interesting. It's telling a story. You know, here's something that I want all of your your uh, podcast listeners to to really focus in on. Marketing is just storytelling. Mm -hmm. Look at what we've talked about here. We've talked about some freaky looking nail and how it makes your your sighting stay better and last longer. We've talked about anatomy of a sales gangster. Here's another one that says, uh, uh, press seven to bash your head against a wall. And it talks about how we don't have an auto attendant. And anytime you call, you get a real person. In most companies, you're going to get some kind of bull crap, you know, nonsense that's yeah. not a real person. But instead of saying, we answer the phone live, right? That's a platitude. Press seven to bash your head against a wall. And we, you know, it's just more interesting. It's telling a story. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And like you mentioned, it, it's copywriting is one of those very um, underutilized skills today in marketing, especially. Um, you know, when everybody thinks of copywriting, they think of Mad Men in the 1960s and what's this ad gonna say in this, this, uh, this paper. But um, really copywriting is, everything that encapsulates your brand and often consumers are hitting your website first like you mentioned earlier so um that's really interesting um 
unfortunately, I think we're, we're butting up against time here. There's like a hundred questions I would love to ask and kind of continue the conversation. So I, I'd love to have a couple more, um, you know, uh, episodes, but, um, Rich, if, if some of our listeners want to learn more about level 10 or, you know, connect with you, where should they go? Uh, well, so there's a couple things you can go to level 10 contractor.com and mm -hmm. see all about our company. Uh, probably the best resource is our podcast. Like you said, we do run a daily podcast. The reason it's daily is because we have, I think we're on episode 400. Anything you can think of is on there. And if, if mm -hmm. on a given day, it's not something that really strikes you as important to your company, then just skip it and there'll be another one tomorrow. But uh, like you said, uh, you've got it in your notes. What was it? Episode three something. What was that? That's on identity. If you want to learn more about this topic. Yeah. Episode 344. Yeah. And just go, go to any uh, podcast platform, Apple or Spotify or anything else and just search for level 10 contractor daily podcast. Also people can email me directly rich at level 10 contractor.com. If anybody uh, would be interested in having us uh, look at your website and do that audit warning, you're probably not going to like it. <laughs> Negative three. <laughs> Yeah, most people are more in the teens to 20s. Right, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, wouldn't you want to know? Absolutely, yeah. Wouldn't yeah, you want to know? Yeah. All right. Um, cool, yeah. Rich, I, thanks again so much, man. I, I think there's a lot of value here, and uh, can't wait till next time. Yeah, and hey, by the way, yep. I'm a huge proponent of Hatch. Ah, perfect. The plug right at the end. <laughs> thanks so it, much, man. It fills a huge need, in my opinion, and – uh and I've talked about it on my podcast probably 10, 15 different times. Uh, we have partnered with Hatch, but it's not because, uh, uh, you know, there's a financial relationship there. It's because this is something that is desperately needed. Right. It fills a, it fills a need that is, in my opinion, it's non-nego. It's like you, there's no decision of should we or shouldn't we do it. It's just do it. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's another way to, to really tell your story too to customers one on one with texting and email and, and you know a lot of different ways. So yeah, you appreciate the plug, Rich. Yeah, no no problem. I, I plug it all the time and I, I get as many of my clients as possible on that thing because it, it works and it makes a difference. So anyway, thanks for having me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good one, Rich. <laughs>